everyone, it's Anya here and I'm back with another video for Ophelia Talks and today we are making a little scrubby that you can use to do the dishes with. Now the thing is, um, it's this typical sort of um, scrubby yarn, they call it, it's called Cleany, um, but um, it has that sort of eyelash effect thing going on which makes it impossible to see your stitches so can you see yeah i can see the bodies of the stitches it's really hard to pick up the v's but if you keep your pattern or the thing that you're making really simple and also if you know what you're doing if you know what should be there this should become a lot easier to use so today i'm going to be using this one here it's a Sachenmeyer cleany special edition it says um, and yeah so you're meant to make this uh, into something to you do the dishes with um, I yeah I've tried this one like I said if you keep the pattern simple enough it should be fine to do what you need to do so we are going to get started with a magic circle I am using my four I am not going to venture and doing a much smaller hook because that's just not going to work, I don't think. <laughs> and I do what I normally do. There we go. Okay, so you do your magic circle and I'm doing another chain up. So I've got two chains. I know I've got two chains. And then I am going to do another 11 double crochets in the circle. Now... Yeah, counting your stitches will be hard, so just make sure that you're counting them as you do them. And here we already see that I have some problems. Um, so keeping your loops big enough and doing your movements a little bit bigger so that it's all, you know, clear what you're doing. Doing your stitches a little bit looser to be honest what we're making it doesn't really matter what it looks like because you can't see the stitches anyway if you've made a mistake nobody's going to see it so we've got the chain so that's going to count as the last one then we have one two three four five and i'm just counting the bodies of the stitches here because i can <laughs> i can see them um so yeah, it's um, a little bit, I keep snagging on the little things, <laughs> but keeping my movements a little bit bigger and I've lost count. Oh dear, we'll count the bodies of the stitches again in a minute. I had five, so how many have I done now? That should be okay now. Okay, so count again, so not this one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay. Now, pulling this magic circle is not going to be easy. So, I'm going to keep all my stitches nicely in between my thumb and my fingers like so, just to keep them level. And now, very carefully, I'm going to pull, but also quite hard, I'm going to pull Okay, and it pulled out again. Okay, so I've pulled quite hard. And let's put that hook back in and I'm going to close the circle. Now, I know that I've got two chains to skip here, which are impossible to see. And there, I can see a V on top of there. So I'm just going to take that. Okay, if that wasn't the one, then that's too bad. Okay. <laughs> Right, so there we go, okay. So I guess, um, you know, this type of yarn just requires a laid back attitude. <laughs> okay, so we are going to do the two chains as we normally do. And in our second round for a circle, we are going to do two double crochets in each stitch around. So <laughs> I'm already looking to see where they are. Um, I can see something that resembles a V on top of here. I am just going to use that um, as being my V. Um, there is no point in trying to stress about this. 
it is not going to be the end of the world if my scrubby actually i'm making it for my husband <laughs> uh is going to be oops yeah not perfect um as long as you know there's no holes i suppose that's the way to go <laughs> Uh, but even if there is a hole, I guess you work, you use this in your dishwashing and maybe it washes. I don't know whether it would wash. Uh, I am going to try and use these and I will report back during a live, I am sure, about these. So, okay, so yeah, I think here I went just in between the stitches, which is fine. Here... Yeah, I am trying to pick up those fees, but to be honest, I have no idea whether or not I am. Um, you know, you can get sort of that fake fur as well, uh, which you could use for a teddy bear, something like that. Again, yeah, if you find... The thing is, if you have made the project before in normal yarn, it helps because you will know what you're expected to get. You will know the, the stitches that you need to do. So that will help. I mean, this pattern obviously is really simple. I know what I'm doing. Um, I know what should be there. Uh, see, I've got a bit of a hole here, but I'm sure that's fine because I've just picked two stitches in between the two stitches there. Okay, so... I didn't pick up the V's probably. So, you know, if you know the project, if you know what you're doing, it helps. Uh, obviously, you cannot see, you know, even if you're making a teddy bear or something with that sort of fake fur type, you can't see it because the fluff hides it, basically. So, you know, but yes, like I said, laid back attitude <laughs> helps. <laughs> and so, yeah, it is a lot slower even for me, to use this um, type of yarn. It's interesting. Um, I mean, I bought this when I was in Belgium. I don't know whether you saw that video, the Belgium vlog. Um, so, you know, I wanted to try it out. I've never used anything like this before. Um, and I suppose for trying it out, just for having an experiment, I think this type of project is ideal because yes you use it for the washing up nobody's going to be counting the stitches are they <laughs> um, I have to admit I, it's difficult to do the crocheting through my um, viewfinder <laughs> it's even more difficult to see the stitches in the viewfinder so the question now is was that you know this the first one yeah I think I'm going to use this as the first one of my stitch and then the chain is going to be the second one and I'm going to go under the V there and do my slip stitch now if you find that it's not lying flat then obviously you might have missed some stitches somewhere um, I can see that there's quite a hole in the middle so I have not closed up my magic circle properly but that should have done that now I'm really pulling it um, yeah I think that's looking fine okay so we're gonna go for a third round and that then we'll do a closing round so once again this thing is getting to me now <laughs> okay so two chains this time we are doing one stitch in the first stitch, two stitches in the second stitch. So we're doing double crochets. So one in the first and two in the second. Okay, there we go. And yeah, so it takes a little bit of concentration, I would say, to just keep your hook in as well because it, I keep snagging it on all kinds of things it seems on all those little things that are there um, actually I can yeah I can see the bodies of the stitches and under these circumstances I think that's good enough so yeah I mean 
To say it gets easier is probably a bit exaggerated, but you get a little bit used to it and... Mm. See, I'm going in somewhere here and I don't really know. Yeah, that's okay. So yes, I mean, take your time. Um, if you really have something that needs to be made in this type of yarn, just take your time. And do it to the best of your ability, basically, with, you know, the limitations that... <laughs> The limitations of not being able to see your stitches. <laughs> oh, never mind. Okay, so, yeah. <laughs> but it's going well, I think. Um, it's not too bad. And like I said, this is not something that's going to be on show or anything like that. Um, it's going to be used. Hopefully it works. Um, and if it doesn't work, well, it's been, a, it's been an experiment. Let's put it that way. Okay. I'm nearly there. I will see you at the end of the row. <laughs> Now, I am at the end of my row here, so again, I'm thinking this will be the V <laughs> and I'm going to do a slip stitch. Okay, so trying to sort of look through it, I think it looks all right stitch-wise. I don't have too many, you know, mishaps or anything, too big holes. Now, I'm going to finish by going round with a single crochet and then doing a loop like I did with this one here. So, chain up one. And you're going to do a single crochet in each stitch around and sort of in four places I think I did two there we go there's one location where I've done two single crochets just so that it would keep it lying flat I don't know whether it needs it but you know every so often do two single crochets in there there we go and yeah this is even more difficult now because it's really snagging plus also it's hurting on my on my pinky as well it's scrubbing it clean <laughs> oh dear okay so I'm now sort of halfway round I'm now going to do about 15 chains because I like to hang up my little uh, scrubby that I've been washing up with so it can dry and not go smelly or moldy uh, in between uses. I am hoping to be able to wash this as well in the washing machine. Oh yeah, so it says uh, 60 degrees, um, not in the tumble dryer, not, yeah, so you can wash it, so that's good. Uh, at least, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then I am going to go back into that same stitch here yeah and do another single crochet and then continue on by doing single crochets yeah in every stitch that you think you see <laughs> see And I'm nearly there and my my disc has not quite turned into a bowl <laughs> so that's good <laughs> okay and yeah where did we start that's a good question isn't it is it this one here yeah probably so again try and keep an eye on that and where do I go in here sometimes easier to go in with the back of your hook but I am just doing the best I can under the circumstances. <laughs> oh dear. There we go. I can't see a thing now. Yeah, 
there is one there is this here yeah that's my yeah so I'm just gonna do another one here and then find what I think is the top of that <laughs> first single crochet there and do a slip stitch there we go okay now sewing in the ends it's gonna be interesting as well okay so what I did there was no way I could get this into a needle and there was no way I could um, sew it in so what I have done with this one I have just taken the edge end here and with my hook I have been sort of pulling it through the through the fabric in between the stitches and I've just been going like that pulling it through looping it round and just hoping that what you pull through is that piece of yeah and I've just been going round like that so in between the bodies of the stitches you just keep going not too far away each time sort of the next the next stitch along see it's getting shorter and I just kept doing this until it was gone really um, so for a, quite a long time because obviously no, no this is not the way we usually do it or not the way I usually do it anyway um, but this was sort of the, the only you know the only way I could think of that would hide the end but that would still obviously sew it in yeah so as you can see it's getting shorter and it's disappearing so yeah I hope this video was useful for you certainly if you've never used this type of yarn before uh, like I said to start for if this is the first time you're using it use it for something like this because any mistakes doesn't really matter um, if you are I would love to make a little cardigan in this you know but obviously yeah I am a bit worried about being able to follow the pattern because of not able to see the stitches but again keep your pattern keep your project simple enough and you should be okay there we go so I'm going to play around with this end for a little bit longer and then I will see you in the next video thank you for watching bye mm -hmm.